why doesn't the narcissist ask for what they want? There are occasions in consultation where people ask me, it would be so much simpler, HG, if the narcissist just actually said what they wanted. Why does there have to be this dance, this merry-go-round? Why does there have to be such a carry-on? All of the shenanigans. I'm a very accommodating person. Patient, loving, caring, attentive. If they told me what they wanted, I would invariably give it to them. I don't understand why we always have to have such rigmarole behind everything. Life could really be a bowl of cherries. I look after myself. I like to think of myself as attractive. I'm fun. I'm decent in the sack. I care about people. I love them with everything that I've got. Surely the narcissist wants all of that. Surely the narcissist would prefer an easier route through things. They just have to speak their mind and everything would be okay. So why don't they do it? It's a fair question. But remember, you are naturally looking at this from your worldview, and it is not the same as ours. First of all, by asking the question, why doesn't the narcissist just ask for what he or she wants, you presuppose that the narcissist actually knows what they want. The majority of narcissists do not know. You might think it's that they want regular sex, or for you to make meals for them, or to allow them to hang out three nights a week with their friends, or to give them an easier ride with regard to domestic chores, or perhaps to give them praise and attentiveness for their achievements, to always acknowledge what they've done, almost give them a medal at the end of each day for just getting through it. It's understandable that you might fall into the trap of thinking in such terms, but that isn't what the narcissist actually wants or needs. Regular listeners of my work will know that what the narcissist actually wants is the prime aims. Fuel, control, character traits and residual benefits. However, the vast majority of narcissists being lesser and mid-range don't know that these are the things that they want. Many will not even admit or recognize that they want attention. Yes, there'll be some individuals who say, yes, I like the attention. Yes, I like the spotlight shining on me. I like people to give me recognition for what I do. And of course, what they're really saying, although they don't know that, is, I like the positive fuel. I like to be the center of attention. Because that is when I am receiving lashings of positive fuel from you, from them, from everybody. But they don't know this. They don't know that they need fuel. They don't realize that they must obey the first law of narcissism and have all appliances under control at all times. And if they are not, then they must be brought under control as quickly as possible. They don't realize that. They may well think, I just want you to get along with me. I just want you to stop making life so difficult. And you're left scratching your head thinking, but it's not me that makes life so difficult. It's you, Mr. Narcissist, that does. But of course, the narcissist, blinded by the way that his narcissism operates, won't let him see that he is the problem. Through his perspective, you are the problem. Even if you were to point out to that narcissist, you're the one that's trying to control me, by a lesser or mid-range, the narcissism will not allow the narcissist to see that that is the case, and indeed will project that you're the controlling one by trying to tell them to behave in such a way as to be less controlling. It's turned around and thrown back at you. The narcissist doesn't know that he or she wants those character traits to bolt onto the construct to create that exoskeleton. The narcissist doesn't know that they require the residual benefits. Yes, they will appreciate the fact, perhaps, that you run the household, and, of course, where it suits them for the assertion of control, they'll thank you for doing those things. But they don't realise that they require them almost in a transactional manner, that you are obligated to provide them, irrespective of your thoughts and feelings on the matter, that you are somehow an indentured servant to the narcissist. So... For the narcissist to ask for what they actually want, they would need to know what it is that they want. And the vast majority of narcissists do not know. 
What then about the greaters and the ultra? We know what we want. We know we want those prime aims. So why don't we just ask for them? Well, the difficulty is, of course, is that if I was to say to somebody, I need and want your fuel, please give it to me, they'd respond by, what on earth are you talking about? And therefore, in those precise terms, it would be nonsensical to ask for them. Give me your character traits. What do you mean? However, you might think, well, count it in a different way. Explain to that person. I require your admiration and your love. I require you to praise me, look up to me, adore me. Please ensure that you do it. Many people would say, willingly. I will provide you with all of that. You are worth loving. You are worth adoring. There are reasons to admire you. There are reasons to show my happiness towards you because you have created that. However, the difficulty is that an aware narcissist, the greater or the ultra, would never ever ask for that. Why? Because it is weakness to do so. It amounts to a transference of power. If the narcissist were to admit, these are the things that I need from you, Miss or Mr. Appliance, we are transferring power to that individual. We are placing in their hands a decision to provide us with those things, and therefore, by telling them what we want and allowing them to make a decision about the provision of the same, we are handing control to them, undermining our control of them, and therefore, it is nonsensical for us to take such a step. You may suggest, take a leap of faith, trust in this person, they're empathic, they'll do what they say, but the problem is that you do not. You end up challenging us in some way. Because no matter what your good intentions are, you will always fail us. The fuel that you once provided in copious amounts is reduced. And of course, if you provide it in such huge amounts and continue to do so, we become bored of it and stale, and we blame you for it. You will invariably do things which threaten our control. Invariably, it is, of course, unwittingly done, but the threat is there nevertheless. The whole point is, it doesn't matter what your intent is, it is how we perceive it, and the actuality, through our lens, of what is going on that causes the problem for us. And therefore, even if, not that we would, ask you for what we wanted, as the greater or the ultra, you wouldn't be able to provide it to us all of the time, notwithstanding your most ardent endeavours, your best intentions, you would not be able to do it. Accordingly, the narcissist does not ask you for what he or she wants, because for the most part, the narcissist doesn't know themselves, and therefore can't ask for it. And where we do, we will not do so, because such an act is detrimental to our control of you, and we are not so stupid as to sacrifice our control of you in such a self-sabotaging way. Even if you might argue that if we did speak out, it would increase the chances of you complying and providing us with what we want, that is still not the guarantee that is required, and as the greater and the ultra, we know that if you fail us, then we can just shove you to one side, because there is always a replacement. That is what the greater and the ultra have by way of a significant advantage. But the constitution of our fuel matrices is such that even when people might, in the rare instances, escape us, where people threaten our control, we are so accomplished, so expert, a certain control once again, that it matters not, and that it is far more preferable for you to threaten our control than for us to assert it over you, than for us to hand the keys of the kingdom to you. We do not trust. We do not trust you. And therefore, for all that you might say, the way that we are created is not to trust you. And therefore, we cannot ever say to you, this is what I need. Please provide it to me. To do so is weak. And we are not weak. We must not do that, for we give control to you. We are the controllers. You are must be the ones that are controlled. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.